Okay. So if we do that, you can see the S there. Well, I'll write it out. Right, and that S canceled that S there, so I'm not writing it. Now it's just substitute in S equals 0. So what I, here I'm going to have, um, so substitute S equals 0, you have minus a minus 3, which is plus 3 over 3, so that's 1. You've got S, it's 1. <laughs> okay, 1. And so you recall the definition of whether the system is offset is you take the limit as t goes to infinity, the difference between the set point, which goes to 1 in this case, and the output, which goes to 1 in this case, so it's 0. All that means is the controller has integral action. The controller is designed to eliminate offset, so this is not a surprising result, even though I asked you to find it. Okay? Okay, good. Now, so for part seven, I'm going to probably just outline the last two parts because we have like eight minutes left. I tell you, um, compute the response. So in other words, there is the, the, the transfer function for the response. I'm asking you in part seven, take the inverse Laplace transform of this thing to find the y of t. Okay. Take heart. Remember, this is the part I promised I would eliminate. <laughs> but just so we know how that's done. So if I tell you find the response explicitly, then the goal is to try to find what the thing that you're trying to take the inverse Laplace transform in the table. What's it, table 3.1 or whatever? That's your hope, that it's in the table. OK. So you're looking for something that this will compare to. My supposition here is that you, uh, what's wrong with me? My chalk has become too short and ineffectual. Oh, look at this. Here's my claim. You want to put it in this form. This form, I don't know, I don't remember, does table have a K here? Not usually, okay. I claim I want to put it in this form here. There'll be a K in mine, I can just multiply the answer by K. Why do I want to put it in that form? Right, just in case, my handwriting seems to degrade it quickly. Um, but this is tau 3s plus 1, there's an S there, tau 1s plus 1, tau 2s plus 1. Number one, this entry is in the table, okay? And I can see that this is going to have the same form if I'm willing to do some rearrangement of it. Right? Because I look at the denominator, I see an S here. So there's an S there. I see this is going to be second order in S. That's going to be first order in S in the numerator. So I can guarantee to rearrange it to look like that. Of course, to do it is where some of the work is. But if you do the rearrangement, which is all algebra and it's shown, let's see what we get here. I actually did it in the part before. The minus three. Ah. That's how bad, I, that's all I could remember. <laughs> it's not impressive. Okay, whatever. I'm telling you, you can rearrange this thing here to look like this. And now you know what the tau 3 is, the tau 1, and the tau, t tau 2. Okay? So the k, I guess, in this point is actually just equal to 1. Is that what I have? Yeah. So there's no, there's no need for a k here. Once you get it in this form, okay, right, now I know tau 1. It doesn't matter what I call tau 1 and tau 2, obviously, but I'll call them this. And the tau 3 is minus 1 third. Now the inverse Laplace transform of this thing, or that thing more generally, is in the table. Now you just use it, plug in your values of tau 1, tau 2, and you get the answer. 
And the answer looks something like, let's see if I can remember while I walk over there. There's no way I'm going to remember that. I can remember part of it, though. There's the first two terms. And then uh, there's a minus. OK. I can tell you by looking at this that, um, well, let's see if I'm right, that this term comes from there. This term comes from there, and that term comes from there. But you don't need to know that. You can just plug, get the formula out of the table, plug in your values of tau 1, tau 2, tau 3, simplify, you'll get that. All right. So that's, that's admittedly mainly algebra. Well, it requires that you're able to do the rearrangement and use the table, which is what I was ch mainly checking for. All right. Now, part, the last part is, the, is truly the part that requires you to think, so it says, Use this response that you just obtained, that thing down there, to determine if this controller, that's the response of the controller, right, to a set point change. As you um, use this response to determine if the IMC controller has an inverse response. I want you to take this equation and prove to me it generates an inverse response. It will, right? Because if you go back to the design way back over here, we had to include this in the closed loop response because we couldn't cancel it out. And it's got a, it's got a right half plane 0. So it's going to have an inverse response. But I want you to prove it. Okay. So the, the basis of this problem, which I won't go through in detail, is the following. This is what I was looking for, at least. So if you were to plot this equation qualitatively, it's going to look like this. What's the gain of this thing? So if you look at where it starts, it starts at 0, right, as it should. Because if you plug in t equals 0, you get 1 plus 4 minus 5. So it starts at 0, and it goes to 1. Okay. And qualitatively, my, my proposition is it's going to look something like that. And then that value is 1. Okay. So to have an inverse response, it means it does that. Okay. So at this point right here, at the bottom of this inverse response, Right there. Do you agree? dy dt is 0 right at that point. Okay. You're only going to find a value of dy dt equals 0 if it has an inverse response. Because if it has a normal response, there is no such thing, at least not until time goes to infinity. Okay. So if you, can f if you can find a point where the derivative equals 0, it exists, that means it has an inverse response. That's the way I chose to solve this. This is the part that requires some thinking. Okay. So now what do you do? Take the derivative of this thing with respect to time. Find the time that this occurs. It's, it's of some finite number. It has an inverse response. You'll see it in the notes. Okay, So we're out of time, but you get the idea. So it's not hard to take the inverse. It's not hard to take the derivative with respect to time, set it equals 0, and find the time at which, find this time right here. Okay, that, And that proves that um, there's an inverse response, basically. Okay. I was looking for something more than you to plot this on your calculator and say it has an inverse response, OK? <laughs> All right. Um, so we're out of time now. Sorry about the projector again. Do you have any questions? So yeah. It, you only do that if I specifically tell you I want GC to be KC. Yeah. So for example, if you're doing the direct substitution method, I tell you to find the ultimate gain. This, this is just an example then I'm telling you implicitly I want GC to be KC. But like this Ruth method, you could do for a PI controller as well. It gets a lot more cumbersome. But so if I, anytime you have a controller, I'm supposed to tell you what controller I'm interested in. Is it con proportional, PI, or whatever? Okay.